Ah, uh, hello, there you are, a very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClue, and we are, of course, live on Facebook Live. That is the big one, the moment the world has been waiting for. One hour of superb, scintillating information, education, and entertainment made possible by you, the good burgers of the world. The people who are watching globally. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I say it's Sunday night. Nothing gets past me, of course. And it's Sunday the 4th of December 2016. A very warm welcome to the Scotty McClue program. As I say, television's off at 10. It's all happening. Make sure you share, 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 share. Let everybody know and tell 10, tell 10, tell 10 about Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live just for you. Dinky doo. Now then, James McCalf is watching. All right, pal. All right, James. Yes, Scotty says Chris Smith. Hey, hello, says Innes. Hello, says Frank. Frank McElroy is watching. Hello, Scotty says Daniel. And Jim Clark's watching. Charlie Andrews is watching. Good evening, Scotty. Christopher Smith says, Legend, legend to you as well, sir. Evening, Scotty says Andy Taylor. A dinky do to you. On time this week, McClue. Are you off the whiskey? says George Mullen. George. Haven't had a dram for over a year. Ah, there you go. Hiya, Scotty, says Julie Ann Scott. And hi, Scotty, Merry Christmas, says David Steele. And to you, your lordship, Ian Cook, up in Dundee, is watching a very fine musician, great organist and pianist. Mary is watching in Courtbridge. Mary Carty, dinky do to you. Dean Park is watching one of our finest entertainers and starring in pantomime this year, of course. So if you can get to see Dean Park in pantomime, you do so, because that man is a legend. A shout out to all of us here, Dinky Doo, of course. And hello from Laura Sargenor. Dinky Doo to you, Laura. Lovely to hear from you. Hello, Scotty. We're listening in Lancashire says Margaret Gray. Do let me know where you're listening and where you're watching throughout the world because we have viewers now, not just listeners. Dave Helmsley says, good evening, Scotty. He tells me he's no longer in Lancashire. Dino the Doug says, hello, Scotty. Oh, no, he's not, says George Mullen. Very good about uh, Dean Park's pantomime. What's the topic tonight then, Scotty? Well, Innes, we're discussing a lot of things tonight. What I want to discuss tonight is, do you think the politicians have got your best interests at heart. Do tell me what you think on there, of course. And um, also, there's Lynn Donnelly, my hairdresser. Fantastic, Lynn. Need to see you and get a wee trim soon. Wonderful lady, Lynn Donnelly. Very, very, very hardworking out in Orchard Park there. Evening from Torrance, says Charles McLachlan. A very fine part of the world, Charles. <laughs> Torrance. I know it well. So there we are, and at last something decent on in a Sunday, says George Raffin. Well, I don't know what you look at in a Saturday. Only the SNP, says Innes. He feels the SNP are looking after us. It's interesting that of all the political parties, and as you know, I'm not a political animal, I have no party. Uh, can you unblock Elliot? Uh, he's innocent. He's been unblocked for a long time, Glenn, so I don't worry about that. What's occurring, Scotty? Uh, yes, it's interesting that out of all the political parties, Nicola Sturgeon, as a leader, and the SNP are the only ones that the people trust implicitly. I find that very interesting. James Forbes watching. Hello, James. Did you do? My pet mouse Elvis died this week. He was caught in a trap says George Mullen. Ah, you see, entrapment. Vote for Scotty McClue for President of America, says Steve Webster. Well, had I been an American citizen, I may well have been standing as President of uh, the United States of America, my fellow Americans. So there you are. But not being a citizen, I couldn't. Although we did have politicians have blocked themselves from having their internet searches checked yet voted for the public to be under scrutiny. Tut, tut, tut. Rebecca Booth Waterhouse watching. Dinky do to you, Rebecca Booth Waterhouse. Chuck McGinty, the SNP are trying their hardest and doing a good job, says Shug. Kieran Fox is watching. I hope you're well, Kieran, and on the mend, of course. And uh, Aleem is watching. Scotty Mabro, how are you doing? Dinky do, Scotty McClue, says James Forbes. 
And uh, we're listening in Torrance of Glasgow. We hope you're well, Scotty. So Stuart Savage, big, big listening in Torrance. Fantastic. And uh, SNP, Scottish Nasty Party, says Andy Beatty. So obviously there's something that he doesn't quite understand about what they're doing. I think there's much nastier parties out there. And as I say, I'm not a political animal. Right hand, calm it down, says Ennis. Good evening, Scotty. So it's Francis King. Good evening to you, Francis. Lovely to have you with us. And uh, Lynn McDowell is there. Nice to see you back, Scotty. Well, I'm back courtesy of your good selves, folks. But you need to spend the week sharing. You like and like and like and like all the McClue stuff, but you must share it because we are building a very big program here. Donald Trump's the answer. How stupid is the question, says George Mullen. If Donald Trump's the answer... How stupid is the question? Andy, are we in read up on your facts, pal? The SNP are doing a very good job for the people of Scotland. The national team says Shug McGinty. And Shug McGinty would know. Jen Pirrett's watching. Hello, Jen. Dinky do. Hugh Miller's watching. Can I buy your hat, Scotty? Says Aleem. No. I bought this in a lovely shop in Ilkley. So there you are. Ilkley Moor Bat Hat. Or an Ilkley Moor Bat Hat. What does it mean, bat hat? Without your hat. You're up in Oakley Moor. There's a big moor rises up from the town. Scotty, what do you think about the protests occurring in North Dakota over the oil pipeline? Well, I think if people are protesting, we need to find out why. Because oil pipelines, I mean, are they doing a lot of good? Or are they not doing so much good? Mike Henfield's watching, perhaps one of the finest radio managing directors in the world. A tremendous manager of radio stations, Mike Henfield, a first class journalist, old school journalist, top, top, top writer and a super guy. So there you are. That's what I think of Mike Henfield. I'll tell you that for nothing. And also a very, very, very fine lecturer on radio. And uh, on, on the media, uh, Scottish national team, <laughs> don't know how that got in my comments, says Shug. Dinky do from Nottingham, says James Michael Harvey. How marvellous. Chris Smith, right, Scotty. Do you drink a certain drink, Scotty? No, I don't. I don't drink at all, Glenn. So there you are. Take the hat back, Scotty. <laughs> Why? What's wrong with the hat? Oh, no, claim more bat hat. Uh, we marry of the SNPs kicking backsides in Westminster. What do you think? Yes, she is, George. She's telling the truth, Mary Black. Very, very good. Um, you know, and very compelling to watch what Mary's up to. Paul Anton is watching. Thoughts on Pollock going out to Talbot in the Junior Cup, says Innes. Well, you've got me there, Innes. It's difficult to have thoughts on Pollock and the Junior Cup. Good evening, Scotty, says Andy Grant. And there's Glenn Thompson watching. Oh, what? Gary Davidson's watching. How marvellous. Seize the day. It's backwards. You might not be able to read it, but it says, seize the day. Mm. Lovely, lovely cup of tea. Earl Grey tonight, folks. And we've got water as well. Uh, Sunday just got much better, says Suraj Shatterjee. Good evening, Scotty, says Gary Davidson. Thank you, do. I'm only 12, says Kamal, and I love your show. Kamal, I always remember the head of Radio 1 turning up when I was speaking at a, a conference. And I thought, I wonder what he's doing here. This is very distinguished. But um, he was obviously there because Scotty McClue's audience is youth audience, big time. You can listen from about 9 till 90. Well said, George. Are you a jambo, I'm being asked here? You're looking younger every time I see you, Scotty, says Paul Antony. Are you on the swelly tonight, says Chris? No, no, I don't go on the swelly. Can you get a quiz going, says George Mullen. So there we are. Right, here's your first question, George. Um, well, in a Liverpool pub quiz, of course, the first question is always, who are you looking at? But um, yes, I'm, I'm sure we could get a quiz going. I don't think that'd be a problem. Do you take a wee quiz get the New Year, Scotty, to bring in the bells? John Paul Preston's asking. And what I think we might do is bring in the bells here. Here's somebody Skyping. Who is Skyping McClue, I want to know. Alex is calling. Hello, Alex. Dinky you know. Hello, Alex. You're live on Scotty McClue. Hello, Alex. Dinky you know. 
Can what you, what is this? Can you hear me? What do you mean, what is this? This. You've come upon my Facebook by yes. mistake. I have not added you. No, 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 no. I've not come upon your Facebook by any mistake, Alex. I'm here you because... You must have added me. No, no, I don't think I added you at all. I don't even know you. What I think is you've just happened to alight on the world's top talk show. Well, I beg to differ. I'm looking at you. You look yes. like you're modelling for scatter cushions. Oh, well, thank you very much. I'll, I'll tell you, I mean, I don't know what you look like, and I have no interest in what you look like. You know, I'm sure your face looks like one big cushion. Mince pies. Have you had many mince pies I already have had a lot of mince season? pies, yes. I take a mince pie. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, I actually had my own pie company until I sold out. McClue's pie. Good Lord. McClue's pie. Looking at those glasses, I would imagine you like mincing and pieing. Oh, well, we don't know about that. I mean, you must speak for yourself, sir. Now, what is this? What, what, what is, is it? It's the, world's, is... it's the world's top talk show. And it happens to be oh. on Facebook Live, right? Because mm -hmm. um, Facebook Live is actually getting bigger than any television company or any radio station. And I have made a living working out of television and radio stations. And now I'm on Facebook Live. And the whole world can see me. But what is that? your function? My function is to find mm. out what the nation wants to talk about. Well, ask me what I want to talk about. Well, I haven't asked you what... I mean, what do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about something? Mind your own business coming up on my Facebook page and then asking me personal questions. Very rude, young man. You're very, very lucky I've come upon your Facebook page because I wouldn't think you've ever been properly educated. I ah, beg your pardon. There you are. You've come now. upon what? This is an information, education and entertainment channel. You uh -huh. seem damn right rude, if you don't mind me Well, saying. I don't know, no, no, only if I have an idiot on, and I'm not quite sure about you yet. I haven't made my mind up. Are you insinuating I'm a half-wit? Well, there's an Alex Robertson here who says, Alex, don't be rude. I'm not being rude. I've just seen this bumbling old man coming up on my Facebook yes. talking nonsense. And then you saw me, and what did you think? Why are you dressed up in a tie, in a jacket, in a shirt, with a cap and glasses when you're in your own house with central eating on? Out of respect for the people who are watching. You well, dress do you think as they a care you're hardly a sex symbol? Do you think you're a Chippendale? Hardly a sex symbol. A Chippendale, chip, not the sofa people. A chip off the old block. Mm. Have you ever done any modelling in your formative oh, years? Oh, I've done a lot of modelling in my formative years, absolutely. I'm doing a bit of mm. modelling now. I mean, I don't know if you've spotted my very fetching tweed cap. Mm. You look like you're uh, modelling for door knockers. I think you're a bit of a knocker yourself. I think you should actually go. We're getting fed up with you. Right, <laughs> there you are. Off he goes. You're being rude, Alex. Lee and Tim Scotty says James Forbes. David Hammond's watching another very fine broadcaster. He's a quarter wit, says Jada. Boy, it's back to the Scott FM days. Lol, says Hugh Miller. Yes, indeed. Scott FM was Scotland's finest media hour, Hugh, without a shadow of doubt. And then another company bought the station and changed it to a music station. Can you imagine? Ha 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 ha! Says Shug McGinty. Hi, Scotty. Sorry I'm late, says Morris Sergeant. Not at all, Morris. Welcome now. Put him off, says Michael McGuigan. He's an old snob, Scotty, says Hugh Miller. Ooh, he's been mugged, says Christopher Smith. Sorry I'm late, Scotty. Get held up by a cyclist, says Sandy Howden. I think, Sandy, you've got it in for cyclists. I really think you have done. It sounds like a failed school teacher, says Chris McLean. Ah, well, you might be a Chippendale, Scotty. The guy was a deck chair, says Gary Crossan. You tell him, Scotty, no time for wasters. We've only got an hour. Let's talk about women drivers. Can you give a shout out to Maggie from Basford in Nottingham, Scotty? Dinky do. He's just got spanked, says Ross Cullen. Yes, he has, Ross. Laurie LD Dev is watching in Stornoway, I suspect. So dinky do to you. Come on, aha, ooh, Laurie LD Dev. Hachima. The guy was a right 
something or other says Innes. Good evening, Scotty. Dinky do from Starnaway, says Lawrence L. D. Dev. Julianne Scott says, I see someone, I saw someone riding a penny farthing today, Scotty. Not an easy thing to do, to be quite honest with you. Scotty, do you have Elliot blocked? He can't see you on Facebook. No, I don't have Elliot blocked, Chris. He's uh, clear to come on. Um, Adam says, he reminds me of, uh, I can't see that actually. Heart Radio could do with you. Their ratings must be down, says George Mullen. Every radio station could do with Scotty McClure. I mean, when you think about it, we took an audience of 3,000 at night and turned it into quarter of a million per half hour. Incredible stuff. So, I mean, you know, every radio and television station, they just need to come and ask. Scotty, will we be getting a Christmas bash as well as a Hogmanay bash this year? Francis, I may well do a Scotty McClure Christmas message. Dinky do, old chum, says Stephen Nunnally. Dinky do to you, Stephen. If brains were made out of chocolate, I just missed that. Uh, yes, I think we'll be getting lots of festive bashes from Scotty McClure. He's just been drop kicked back into 2012, says Jill Taylor. Sandy Howden, driving out of Pennycoop, Scotty, I measured the cyclist tracks on both sides. They took up a third of the road, no tax. I can see where you're coming from, Sandy. If there are cycle tracks on the road, should they pay tax? But... They are not motorised, Sandy. The cycle tracks are not motorised. Scotty, you're the best DJ in Scotland, says Christopher McLean. I thank you. Alex Robertson, just done a show, show five of Cinderella, the pantomime at the King's Theatre in Glasgow. 60 shows to go. I hope you can come. Great Glasgow audiences, thanks to them all, says Alex Robertson. So Alex is playing, I think it's um, Baron Pollock, in uh, in the um, pantomime it's wonderful stuff in the pantomime baron pollock uh, is playing in the pantomime at the king's theater of glasgow he's got 60 shows to go and he's saying to scotty mcclure come along all of you go along and see alex robertson very very fine actors in the panto there of course all pantomimes tremendous dean park in the pantomime as well what do you think of donald trump becoming president says kamal as he's well there wasn't a great deal of choice. Scotty McClure could not stand as President of the United States because I am not an American citizen. I did score 74% in a Twitter vote, but there was a great chance. That's the problem. Harry Sam's watching. Dinky do, Harry. A very fine fellow there. Scotty, can you tell us now, why did Scott FM give you the push after you established the station in Scotland? Well, new owners took it over, George. And uh, they obviously didn't fancy um, the the pressure of the competition. What we'd done, we'd taken, I mean, the head of one of the other stations had very cruelly described Scott FM when it started as a poor wee chunter of a station. And when McClure arrived, we decided to put it on the map. And boy, did we put it on the map. And then, as I say, new owners took it on and they found terrific pressure from the other stations. Scott McClure changed the whole radio market at the time, as he is prone to do. And uh, some people just can't cope with the pressure of that. So it was nothing I did. It was nothing I said. It was purely wanting to neuter the station so other stations could stay in the game. Uh, some fancy electric bikes can hit 20 miles per hour now, Scotty. I think cyclists do more than 20. If you're a cyclist and you've got a mountain bike, tell us what speed you do, guys. Thomas Dreghorn's watching. Uh, Steve Webster says he broke all the BT telephone exchanges. Yes, £75,000. It cost the telephone company to sort out the exchange. Scott FM was great. Says Jen Pirrit, it was. It was a fabulous station. 50% speech, 50% music, great news, great presenters, full of personality, a proper radio station for central Scotland. But I am in negotiations with very, very, very senior people at the moment in the broadcast and media industry. So look out for something big happening in the new year, including Scotty McClure being very involved. There you are. Uh, Scott FM was great. Well answered, says George Mullen. Not at all, George. Just telling you the truth. And um, Kelly Smith, she's watching. Scotty for Talk Radio or LBC. I would love that, actually. Yes, get into Talk Radio there. That's a great company. LBC, of course, London's biggest conversation. 
Thoughts on Spice Boy, says Innes McDermott. Well, I've never been a Spice Boy, to be quite honest. The boy band I was in was called No Direction. And L107 was good too, says Dan McWilliams. L107 was an excellent station. We just had a problem with a certain administrator, and that caused uh, a, a real serious problem with the station. But no, L107 was an excellent station, sounding great. Scotty, after you left Scott FM, Fat Bob took over. Where did he end up? I don't know, Stuart. I have absolutely no knowledge of what happened to him. Uh, John Paul Preston, I can hit up to 70 miles per hour for a short period of about a minute on his bike. So there you go. There's the truth of it, Sandy. Scotty, you are worth your weight in Scotland, says Chris McLean. Chris, I thank you for that. I would like to see a proper Scottish media being built up. What's your thought on toothbrushes? I once saw a six for a pound, said to a friend of mine, Mr. Cruden, I said to him, look at that, that's a bargain. He said, you'll end up with a mouthful of bristles. Yes, I'm Baron Pollock, but Dean Park isn't um, in that pantomime. It's Gregor Fisher, Tony Roper and Des Clark, says Alex Robertson. No, Dean is in the pavilion. Um, do you do a station in England, says George Mullen. I'm not doing any stations at the moment, George. But what happened when I left Scott FM? When Scott FM changed, I stopped listening to radio as something to pay attention to. I only use it for background noise in the car, says Laura Sosna. And Joanne Menzies, or Mias. Hey, Scotty, can you get a shout out for Alex Carroll, please? Of course I can. <coughs> Andy Beatty, we fat Bob wasn't fit to lace your boots. Galloway followed you. He was the best entertainment. Yes, Galloway and I used to do a hand over in the morning. Cheers. And um, mm, the audience shot up that he called me Feather. Uh, fabulous broadcaster, Robin Galloway. Glasgow Tribute Band to take that. Is this, take this. Max AM, River AM, so Steve Webster, absolutely. Yeah, 107, all these stations. And um, ever thought about being a football manager, Scotty? You'll get them straight to the top. Well, we wouldn't put up with any nonsense, I'll tell you that. And when I was in Aberdeen, who was in Aberdeen? Alex Ferguson. When I went to Manchester, who was in Manchester? Alex Ferguson. When I looked out my studio window in Manchester, there was Man U. It was uh, marvellous, it really was. Uh, Media City down at Salford. And uh, Sandy Hagen says, Scotty, my council tax is going up and the money's not being used in Midlothian. Aha, uh -huh. we need to look at that. Can you read this, says uh, Frank McElroy. I can, Frank. Uh, Laura Sajna uh, has just shared the video. What time have we got? Oh, 22 minutes past 10, guys. Now, can we have a share point, please? Very, very important. Can everyone share right now? absolutely right now share 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 and i can see you all doing it thank you that is marvelous i can see you all sharing come on keep going share 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 everybody i noticed there was things like um i did a promo if you haven't seen it i did a promo for tonight and i did it yesterday at lunchtime at one o'clock so you'll see it. i'm wearing a a jambo jumper um so there you are a jambo colored strip um, now, what's your hot drink tonight, Scotty? It's Earl Grey tea. Mm -hmm. Ah, the very fine Bobby Gracie is watching. There we are, a wonderful man, very, very senior operator, Bobby Gracie, both sides of the Atlantic in the insurance world. Top businessman. Bernadette Turner. Hi, Scott. How are you doing? Hello, Bernadette. What football team do you support in the Scottish Premier? Scotty, well, I support Range Tick. I think they're absolutely fabulous. Range Tick. I wish we had Glasgow United and the Scots would stand together, I say. Hi, Scotty. You're looking great, Scotty. Great to hear you again, says Andy McCallum. Sean O'Brien. Scotty, what's your thoughts on my dad punting Avon? Ah, yes, not a river I would punt on. If you go to Shrewsbury School, you will see they've got the, uh, oh no, that's not the, um, that's the Severn that runs by Shrewsbury School, not the Avon. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Right, there we are. There's an Avon out in Lanarkshire, there's a River Avon there, running through the um, Shatler Road Park. Shared in sunny Stornoway, Scotty's as LD Dev. Thanks very much, folks. Esther Hart, shared, Scotty? I should think so too. And um, 
Is there, there's a wee link to your fine DVD, yes, yes, there's links, and of course get yourselves on to uh, Scotty McCrew's YouTube channel, there we are, very important, hitch yourself to that, what a man, what a man, XH Range Tech, love it, says Brian McKillie, the Range Tech, there we go, and uh, then you've also got the, um, the, the Hibbos, the Hibbos, the high bees and the jambos. Am I the only person who hates tea and coffee? Says Laura. I feel like a wane when someone offers me one. I say no to both. No, stacks of people don't have tea and coffee. Uh, Dave Marshall's watching, and I send lots and lots of love to Dave Marshall, a very, very fine man. He had uh, a very difficult time recently. Uh, I don't think Dave will mind me saying a family bereavement. He lost his wonderful son and uh, he had his birthday the other day and everybody was wishing him a happy birthday. But like the gentleman that Dave Marshall is, um, he, he just informed us in a lovely, lovely way. And Dave, we send love to you and to Barbara. Big hugs to you and we're with you all the time. And remember, he's just in the next room. Now, uh, shared in Liverpool, Scotty, says Carol James Davis. Ah, Liverpool, fantastic. Scotty McClure, what's your thoughts on... I missed that one there. You need to come back to me. What's your thoughts on taxi drivers? Do you think they are failed bus drivers and they can't handle a big bus, so they drive wee taxis and talk more rubbish? So there you are. It's quite interesting, actually, yes, um, the taxi drivers. I remember seeing a driver get stuck under a rail bridge with a huge truck and he got stuck under the rail bridge and of course the panda car arrived with the policeman and out got Chi Chi and Anan. -an. And they were pandas. And um, they had a look round this policeman. Do you know the policeman walking around? Aye. Are you stuck? And the driver says, no, I'm not stuck at all. I'm delivering this bridge and I've lost the address. There we are. Giuseppe Bacchetti is watching. See. See, ciao, Giuseppe, lovely to have you. A shout out to Kate, Eddie, please, says Dylan. Not at all, girl, no, no, Dylan, no problem. Get Labour out in the May council elections, says Shug McGinty. Well, Labour, I have a theory. When John Smith died, the late John Smith, a great man, a mid guile man, a tarbutman, and when John Smith died, a brilliant, brilliant fellow, of course. So catch you later, Scotty Bro, says Chris Malone, dinky do. And um, then on the 1st of May 1997, when New Labour came to power, that was a kind of signing of the death warrant. And then, of course, the next thing is Gordon Brown made that speech that we are better together and Labour became just a memory, just like that, in an instant. Shout out to me, P, please, Scotty, says Sean O'Brien. And uh, hi from Jackie and Dull Rye, a St. Mirren fan. Indy 2 is coming, says Jackie Flynn. Richard Frediani is watching, one of our finest news editors in the country. Does a tremendous job for us there in independent news gathering. Thank you for that, Richard. Thank you for all your hard work. You might always re not realise it, but it is very much appreciated. The sensational Alex Harvey band, best thing ever to come out of Scotland since Ur Rabbi, says Brian McKinley. Hugh Miller, I mind you going on about taxi drivers being well because they're a wooden toilet seat. Yes, they did wooden lavvy seats, fitted carpets, all these luxuries. Their wife with these wee tights, you know, the black tights with the, the seams up them and the bows on the back of the shoes. Get yourself an I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. You'd better be than half the stuff that's on it, says Ross O'Rourke. Steve Webster's watching. Jackie Flynn says, thanks, Scotty. Two wee kisses. And uh, James Cottas is watching. Steve Burrows, would you say Margaret Thatcher was the best Prime Minister? No, one of the things that really annoyed me about Margaret Thatcher was she got rid of the Rover P5Bs, these beautiful big black three and a half litre Rover cars, because she thought people was seeing too much when she was getting in and out of the vehicle. Ridiculous nonsense, superb car. Three and a half litre Rover, the earlier one, the three litre with the cast iron block. Shout out to Big Jock, says Robert uh, Bain. He's being a wee bit naughty. He's saying Big Jock knew. Uh, a shout out to Dan, please, Scotty. He's my best pal. Uh, the SNP sheep have arrived, Scotty. 31% want a referendum now. No, Sandy. 
I think you're obviously reading Labour um, pamphlets from years ago, uh, 1928 or something like that. 72% would like Scotland to be independent now, Sandy. So there you are. And, uh, you know, I mean, I know you're an old Labour guy, love a wee touch of the socialism, I'm not a political animal, as you well know, but Labour just disappeared like that, poof, just gone, absolutely disappeared, woof, off they jolly well go. Uh, can I get a shout out, Scotty, hope you're well, says Aidan Duffy, Bill Lundy from Texas in the US of A is watching, Bill Lundy, I say hi to you, sir, you are a great fellow. And we love the fact you're watching from Texas. So fantastic. Bill Lundy, a Texan. And uh, what big jock is he talking about, says George Mullen. Who knows, George? And uh, the bigger engine in the car, the better, even if it's a rover. Lol, says Christopher McLean. No, these rovers were lovely. The three and a half P5s. McLean, get on with it. What's your thoughts on this tax credit crap money for nothing? Well... I think people need their tax credits. What's your tie? Says Aidan Duffy. And uh, well, you've got to work that out, Aidan. Scotland will be independent quite soon, I believe, says John Paul Preston. John Toms is watching. A very fine businessman there. Great Chief Executive Officer, John Toms. And uh, a very fine broadcaster in his own right, may I say. So dinky-doo to you, John Toms. Uh, a referendum needed to bring Scotty McClue back on the wireless, says Steve Webster. Ah, but referenda can be tricky. Could we be sure of a 100% result? Shut up, you numpty, says Kevin Ray. Right, and to your good self, right back at you, Lala. Scotty, check your Skype. I am checking my Skype. Everything seems to be absolutely fine. Elliot is there. He sent us a request. I used to enjoy your discussions about the high dusting with the dear old lady that used to call in. Doesn't anyone need your domestic advice anymore, says William Rose. Of course they do. Everyone needs my domestic advice. And I think you'll find that a lot of women would be much, much happier if they could be at their own sink. Lots happening here, guys. What have we got? Uh, 2231. It's a share point in the program. We're just over halfway through. Can we share, 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 share? So everything. And guys, you don't need me to tell you. Uh, Josh Mullen says, I listened to Dave Marshall in 1977 when I used to go to work in the fruit market. Oh, wonderful. I can remember I worked with a girl and she just went all dreamy and she went, I just love Dave Marshall. I love his voice in the morning. The whole of uh, central Scotland loved Dave Marshall uh, when he was on the radio and love him now. Uh, I was thinking the same, Christopher, where are all the calls tonight, Scotty? No, no, I've just checked them. There's plenty of people there. Scotty, what's your thoughts on my dad? What's that one? Right, Kev, on your bike, says Innes. Gallus as ever, Scotty, says Cammy West. Of course, Cammy. Uh, is this going to be number four, says Gary Cross? No, Gary, this is program number 11. And make sure you watch the promos as well, because they're uploaded onto YouTube after the show, so you'll be able to see them. So program number 11. And just for the record, well over 60,000 people have uh, witnessed Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live. Okay. Scotty, who was Dr. Dick Midnight Surgery? Dr. Dick's Midnight Surgery was a gentleman called Richard Park, um, who I'm not sure if he's still in radio. I think he is. Um, Sandy says, uh, Scotty, tell George Mullen to get that yes sticker down. No, no, Sandy. People are saying yes, 72% of the people of Scotland want Scotland to be an independent country. Now, that is quite a, a, an undertaking. Um, so, whoever get you're such a naughty man with this sink business, says Jen Wilson Hilton. Sandy, actually, no one likes you, says Innes. <laughs> oh, poor Sandy, he's a soul. He's lost his party. He was a Labour man and they just disappeared. Uh, you know, we've had people like Keir Hardy, John Smith, and then uh, Kezia. So there you are. Unblock Josh and Elliot. They're blocked, says Christopher. No, Christopher, as far as I know, they're not. Um, have you heard who, what, what, where 
I always say who, what, and where. Nonsense, says Thomas Dreghorn. Graham Stewart's watching, one of our finest Scottish broadcasters, of course, a great television and radio man, Graham Stewart. So if you get the chance to see Graham Stewart, he's doing uh, political programmes on the British uh, Broadcasting Corporation and a very, very fine fellow he is, Graham. I've worked closely with Graham, a good colleague of mine, but uh, I'm loving seeing him cutting his political teeth on television. And um, Jimmy Reed, R.I.P., says Steve, a lovely man, Jimmy Reed. I met Jimmy, uh, retired down to Rothsey, but he was a lovely, lovely fellow. There will be no bevying. Uh, my first job was in the fruit market in a cash and carry called Trade Market with Tesco and as they've killed the fruit market, says Christopher McLean. I love the fruit market. I go there early in the morning, beautiful fruit. Scotty, my niece Ashley is expecting, could you tell me where you were? Four months ago, she's thinking and calling it Scotty. <laughs> You're talking nonsense on the 72%, Scotty. Where do you get that figure from? That's the figure. That's the people that want it. Shut it, Sandy, says our man. Right, you Rory McBudgeon. Seriously, block this Sandy get, says Innes. I'm late. I was watching the jungle, says Dean Bard. Now, I went down and I auditioned at the uh, Emirates Stadium where the Gunners play, where Arsenal play. And I auditioned, very funny Gary, says Ashley Stewart, uh, I auditioned for Big Brother. And I got into the final of the um, auditions, and it was marvellous. And uh, But I didn't get it because they said, you've worked in television, and you may well know what we're up to. And I thought, I will definitely know what you're up to. But I did say to them, I said, but I wouldn't let on, I wouldn't spoil it. I would cause an absolute stushy in the Big Brother house. I shall tell you that for nothing. Right, how's the Doug doing, Scotty? The Doug, the Doug, the Doug is beautiful. We Clyde, 10 years of age. He had a fibrocartilaginous embolism about five years ago, and he has fought his way back. He is a dog of great courage. Uh, so there we are. Talking about animals, I don't know if you saw that woman on Facebook that shot a giraffe. I was heartbroken. When I saw, I mean, these are our animal cousins. What was she thinking about? I can understand wild culling uh, if it's uh, necessary, but, um, you know, to shoot these magnificent creatures, elephants, giraffes, but they'll need to watch out because these animals are very big on karma. And I remember some poachers had killed a baby elephant and the family actually found out, um, the elephant family found out uh, which uh, tribe and which village the poachers lived in and trampled the village to bits. Uh, you should get in the jungle, Scotty, shake the place up. You are, after all, a legitimate celebrity and expert uh, teacher. So, jungle for Scotty in 2017. Kevin Malcolm McGregor's watching. Now, he's a Killy fan. Marvellous. I rang up Killy one day. I said, when's kickoff? I said, when would, could you get here? Uh, hi, Scotty. Only joking. Uh, Wadge is there. Hi, Scotty. Dinky do says Wadge. McClure, are you doing a Hogmanay special? Says Thomas. I will if I can. Scotty McClure's Hogmanay bash is legendary on the radio. I mean, just to let you know, when uh, I had to leave Scott FM, I was only out of work for, I think it was on a Wednesday, I left or a Thursday. And uh, a big chum of mine that ran a radio station said, phoned up and said, what happened? I said, I don't know. He said, oh, for heaven's sake. He says, well, I can't start you tomorrow, but uh, I'll start you on Monday. Uh, so there we are. So thanks to him for that, Big J. You're the best, Scotty, says Wadge. Scotty, what's the best part of... No, I'm not telling that, Sean. I'm not telling that, because that's not funny. Um, Come on, the hoops, says... Kevin Ray, are you a hula man, Kevin? Do you like spinning the hulas? And uh, love it, says Thomas. Fantastic. Skype's not busy tonight, says George. It is actually, George. There's plenty of uh, people trying to get through, but I have muted it because they tend to be idiots. And um, I don't actually want idiots on my program. So there you are. Uh, could you eat those beasties in the jungle, Scotty? Oh, you should see what I eat, Esther. I mean, my goodness me. <laughs> Naughty boy, Sean. That was in poor taste, says Dean Bar. Quite right, Dean. It was indeed. Uh, maybe he likes the hula hoop crisps, Scotty, 
says Francis King. Yes, come on the hoops. He's opening a bag of crisps. Christopher Anthony Smith's watching. Come the teddy bears. Come on the teddy bears, says Thomas Treghorn. Yes, absolutely. If you go down to the woods today. And uh, why is Stephen Abadjan? We don't know, Sir Raj. No idiots, please, says Raj. No, Raj, you're quite right. I spoke to a very senior friend of mine last week who said that the show's dynamite, Scott. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I could put television companies out of business. But uh, he said, but uh, get rid of some of the dafties, you know. So I said, no, we'll do that. They were, Why do top business people always speak like that? Get rid of some of the dafties. I would get rid of the dafties if I were you, Scott. That's the way top business people tend to speak. I run a big oil company, international banking. All that sort of carry on, right? Could you do strictly? As says George Muller, who wants a bit personal, George. There you go. Uh, yes, I'm sure I could. I'm sure I could. I'm a great dancer, a great dancer. Talking about the TV, have you watched Planet Earth 2? Great show, says Richard Mackay. I have, Richard, and I absolutely love it. I love David Attenborough's voice when he says, here he is, the sole occupant of this frozen wasteland, the Arctic fox. Lovely stuff. Breakfast, uh, breakfast, sorry, not breakfast. Brexit, says Ian McEwan. Leave or get back in ASAP. I'm wondering if we should look at getting back in and saying, look, uh, you know, we didn't, we, we got sold a, a pup here, told a lot of fibs, a lot of whoppers. Let's have another referendum and perhaps... What we'll do is just stay in Europe. Tell us what you think. 2016 wasn't great for animals. Remember the monkey shot in the zoo? The guy in America hounded for killing the lion. I don't know if you remember, a little boy fell into the gorilla compound and the mother gorilla nursed the child. Fantastic. They're beautiful. Once you get, you know, once we understand animals, they're huge communicators. They might be non-verbal, but they're massive communicators. And... Um, Good evening, Scotty. Dinky do. Thoughts are with all the homeless out in this cold weather, and especially at this time of year as well. Yes, there shouldn't be any homeless. The government should see to that, that everybody has got a roof over their heads. This is what we're talking about. Brilliant impression, says Richard. Thank you, Richard. Harambe, says Christopher Smith. Yes, Harambe. We love Harambe. Spot on, Scotty, says Ian McEwan. The monkey was Harambe, says Suraj. I know, Suraj, we've just said that. SNP only spent 90,000 on Brexit. Not much, that's a Sandy. Yes, 90,000 too much on Brexit, Sandy. Uh, I still have Scotty's autograph somewhere from meeting him in the Forge Market, says Laura Sargent of the Forge Market in Glasgow. I had the privilege of opening the Forge Market and we had to get the crowd to go to another door because it was mobbed. Then I had the privilege of doing the television commercial for the Forge Market as well. So if you want your television commercial or your radio commercial done, I was listening to some television and radio commercials this week and I thought, if they'd used my voice, they would actually have sold. That would have worked. And um, <clears throat> any thoughts on MEMS, says Innes. Lots of thoughts on MEMS. You should do a comedy movie, Scotty, says Wadge. I think so, Wadge. I think my comedy talent hasn't even scratched the surface yet. Scotty, I told 10, I told 10, I told 10, I told 10. So there you are, says Thomas. Thank you for that, Thomas. That's very good of you. What's the time? Oh, 22.42. Three minutes, we're having a big share again. Same as the vote for an independent Scotland. Um, the vote, David Cameron Scaremongers won it. Even big Gordon Brown knew he was used. Yes, I think he probably did, but what a silly thing to do, because if Labour had backed Scottish independence, they would have been in. And uh, Joanne Lamont may well have been the first minister. Um, who knows if Labour had backed that, they may well have been bigger than the SNP as it is. We've got what we've got. We've got 56 SNP MPs in the national parliament and um, doing a wonderful job. Your best joke, says Stephen Clark. Oh, gosh. It'd be difficult to tell you a best joke. Um, I told you yesterday the one about Yorkshire, of course, when my wife took a, a yoga class in Yorkshire, and she said, hands on thighs, and they all did that. Very interesting. That's Yorkshire for you. And um, 
What have we got here? Next independent referendum, we need a foreign adjudicator to verify the vote. Yes, and I also think a lot of the political parties should butt out at a certain time, and we should never have a repeat of the Gordon Brown speech, and uh, we should never have um, the two fighting. We need to get the people, so make it sort of almost apolitical. Scotty, you've reached Sydney. My cousin's watching, says Dean. His cousin's watching in Sydney in Australia. Give us a dab, Scotty, says Shiraj. You know, fine, I don't dab. And um, <coughs> signatures on each ballot paper, says John Paul Preston. Yes, and also, I think a lot of the media should butt out. So they should be careful. They should go into a, a, a point of purda. And you have independent Scottish media, like Scotty McClure, like myself. Uh, making sure there's nothing biased. And uh, who else have we got? Dab, says uh, Scotty McCleary. Well, I mean, Dab, digital audio broadcasting. What's the difference between a horse and a goose, Scotty? I don't know. We're not going there. Uh, right. How are we doing time-wise? 45 exactly. I must have an inbuilt clock. Share point. Share, 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 share. Get sharing, everybody. Just click share on your Facebook page and share Scotty McLoon. Now, uh, what have we got? Get the box out, Scotty, and give us a tune. Good day, says Michael McGuigan. I'm watching. I'm typing too slow, says Christopher. Come on, guys, get sharing. I can see you all. I can see you sharing us. Jackie Flynn, Callum Ruddy, fantastic. George Raffin. Oh, that's the stuff. There it goes. The screen has just gone absolutely bananas. Keep sharing, folks. John Paul Preston. Fantastic. James Michael Harvey. Fantastic. Wonderful. And uh, who have we got? Breakfast. Uh, sorry, I keep saying breakfast. It's Brexit. Uh, it was a fight between the Tories, says George Mullen. I think it probably was. I think it was an attempt by Boris to be Prime Minister then. Obviously, somebody said to Boris, you're not being Prime Minister, chum, I'll tell you that. Uh, here we get. Correct, George. Scotty, you called my cousin Christine in Sydney. Christopher, she won't be happy. Sorry, Christine. Christine in Sydney. Da -da -dum -dee -da -dee -dee. So there you are. You're down by the old... Um, the old billabong there, Christine, in Sydney. And uh, I say, I apologise for calling you Christopher. You are a lady. Jonathan Darwin's watching. I've already shared uh, Scotty, says Julianne, from Ponta Do. Are you hungry, lol? I used to think it was breakfast before. <laughs> Fantastic. Hi, old pal, says Jim Thompson. Big Jim there. Hi, Jim. How are you doing, buddy? Lovely to have you with us. Hey, sir, says Sharon. Dinky do, Sharon. Hi, Ian. It was a Tory plot. Cameron knew what he was doing, says Ian McEwen. I was thinking the other day, though, um, I spoke to the wonderful John Gaunt on a national radio station um, just uh, a few days before the referendum. That's the Scottish independence referendum. And um, Gonti and I had a chat. Politics bores me to tears, says Robbie Bain. I need to get a bit more interest in it, Robbie. Um, and um, I spoke to John and we had a discussion about it. And of course, it was Cameron Miliband and um, who was the other guy? The liberal guy. Help me, somebody help me. You know the one I mean. Um, Oh, gosh. His name's just escaped me. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But uh, Cameron and Miliband and uh, the Liberal guy uh, that was part of the coalition. And, uh, oh, gosh, what's his name? He went to Westminster School. Anyway, oh, Nick Clegg. Nick Clegg. There we are. Just came back to me in time. Nick Clegg. And um, now, where are they now, I say? The whole political scene has changed. Your parties did, says Ennis McDermott. So there you are. You should do a show in Sydney Opera House, says Dean. I don't know what about, but anything would go down well. Oh, I'm sure. Get in there, talk to the people from Australia. Not a problem. And I've been getting very emotional recently. I went down to the garage last night and just started filling up. Very interesting. Uh, Nick Clegg. Yes, you're right, James. Thank you. It came to me in time. Billy McKee's watching. Dinky-doo, Billy. Lovely to hear from you. 
and um, great stuff. What a wonderful program tonight. So, what we've been talking about, if you've just joined us, then you're shockingly, horribly, and appallingly late. Remember, we start at 10 o'clock sharp. Now, I want to see you all over Scotty McClue's social media. And um, no means no, Scotty. Get a Union Jack bonnet. Craig, it's a Union flag. It's only the Jack if it's flying from the Jack staff of an HMS. And it's funny that they weren't allowed... <coughs> pardon me, to project the saltire onto the walls of Scottish buildings. But you look at during the proms, plenty of Union flags flying about then. Politics can be boring to listen to. You could mediate for them and sure would liven it up, says David Russell. Yes, I've always thought I should present a political programme on television. Uh, just one of the many things we can be doing. This is what happens when you like all sorts of media. Um, so there we are. Uh, that's a disservice to clowns. <laughs> Fantastic. And uh, who have we got here? There's, oh, there's so many things. Uh, Scotland. You have things in common, but you choose to ignore standing up to greet. No, I don't, David. I would never ignore standing up to greet. I've stood up to greet all my life. <clears throat> so there you go. Um... Who else have we got? Oh, yes. Take over from Dimbleby in question time. That would be a rare hoot. I'd quite like to be in the panel in question time. Um, so if Mr. Dimbleby's watching, and I know a huge amount of senior BBC people will be watching this right now. But if Mr. Dimbleby's watching, um, you know, get McClue on the panel and we can tell them what's what. I am British, McClue. No means no. Well, y you can be as British as you like, but being British doesn't actually mean an allegiance to anything because Britain is not a country it's an amalgam of several countries so you can either be Scottish you can be English you can be Northern Irish or you can be Welsh but you can't actually be British you can just be somebody who is a member of one of the countries that makes up Britain Scotty thank you I don't know how many times I've had to correct people on the difference between the Union Jack and the Union flag, says Stuart Walker. Ah, you come to a clue. He will tell you. Who would you like to interview, Scotty? I'd quite like to do a programme. We used to rush home for Michael Parkinson's programme. Forget the Jeremy Kyle show, the Scotty McClue show. Jeremy Kyle actually replaced me on the radio in Manchester. I remember that yeah, when I broadcast in the North West. The presenter who came after me was Jeremy Kyle. What about that then? Uh, oh, Scotty, that's not what you said. Something sus about your response. I love your banter, but that's poor, says Jackie Flynn. Jackie, I don't know what you're on about. There's nothing sus about me. Uh, <clears throat> who have we got here? David. Oh, that's youngsters talking to each other. Listen to the verse and God save the Queen that decries the Scots. Yes, Josh, but that was written at the time and uh, the the... There was a war going on between Scotland and England. That verse is not used to decry the Scots anymore. So don't be getting a wee complex about that. Um, your chance, you change like the weather, says Thomas Chekhorn. <laughs> so listen to you for years, Scotty, but all I'm hearing is politics, politics, politics. It doesn't interest me. Stop the bus driver. This is my stop. No. We're not, we're discussing politics with a small p. We're not discussing party politics. So hang on there. Uh, no difference between the Union Jack and the Union flag. They both burn at the same temperature, says Ian McEwan. That's dreadful. Shocking. Uh, what's tonight's discussion anyway, says Dean Barr. Uh, and uh, the verse is still there, says George Mullen. Well, it always will be, George, because the piece was written at the time so there you are so that will always be there but we don't sing it uh, rebellious scots to crush although i'm surprised they're not reintroducing it you know uh single parents mcclure that's what we should be talking about thinks thomas dreghorn the single parents what i was thinking about somebody had asked me last week should you have more than one wife 
most people said one was more than sufficient. Uh, what would you have done if you weren't in TV or radio, says Steve Burrows. I would have been the organist and choir master of one of the great cathedrals. So there you are. Get back to taxing cyclists, Scotty says Sandy. And Sandy, you're like a broken record for goodness sake. We've never taxed cyclists. Scottish through and through, never British. We are not key region. Right, here's somebody Skyping. Scotty McClue. Hello, Lewis. You're live on Scotty's phone in. Who's that? Ah, <laughs> right, Lewis. Bye bye. Right, what an idiot. Now, what I'll do with Lewis is I will ban him. I sincerely apologize for the half witted idiot not knowing how to behave. People are allowed to Skype under trust. He can't do it. So what we're going to do now, here we go here. You just do it with me, folks. It's lovely, lovely stuff. That's him. And block the person that Sir Lewis has banned and report abuse. So we'll click that as well. There we are. That's Lewis banned and reported. We won't be hearing from him again. Now, uh, trying to get rid of the wife I've got, says George. <laughs> London has sucked the life out of the Union a long, long, long time ago. Absolutely. London should stick to itself and we should have the city of Glasgow. A clown, says Thomas Dragon. Yes, he was a clown. A dafty, says James. Yes. I mean, people are trusted. We're guests in people's houses. And a half-witted idiot phones. And that's all he can say because he thought he was being clever. But in actual fact, he wasn't. So we've just blocked him. Uh, did I miss something about Lewis's Jackie? Uh, yes, you probably did. So there you are. Childish. No need for swearing, says Julianne Scott. No, not at all, Ginny. We're guests in people's houses. Please block Sandy, says Innes. Right? Well, Sandy hasn't said anything wrong. hasn't said anything naughty. He's just a little bit misguided and misinformed. Now then. Um, who else? One or two silly comments there. We'll have to get rid of them, of course. If you're going to make silly comments, guys, just go away and do something else. Don't come anywhere near here. Lisa Wilson's watching. And uh, Effin and Jeffin, oh dear, says George Raffin. You're quite right, George. A shocking way to go on. Now, we've only got four minutes. And again, I sincerely apologise for that half-witted young idiot that called. He obviously doesn't understand anything about uh, the value of independent media and uh, that this is a program that you should not churn and love and treat with the greatest of respect because we are heading for a very 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 big program indeed and remember in the new year i can't go into detail at the moment but i'm talking to very very senior people in the media and you'll see scotty mcclue appearing mainstream in the new year guys a hey, lol says thomas draghorn lol to you thomas uh, two hours says craig scotty i've just found out you're on craig Tell everybody, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10, because if everybody tells 10, and hundreds tell hundreds, and thousands tell thousands, and millions tell millions, and billions tell billions, then we are in business. One program a week's not good enough, says George Mullen. Scotty, a great show. I love it, says Thomas. If people don't like what they're getting, then switch off. It's not rocket science. Keep it up, Scotty, says David Russell. Oh, Chrissy, you're good, says Dean Barr. Almost an hour up already, says James Forbes. Yes, I know it just flies in. Time flies when you're enjoying yourself, I say. And I thoroughly enjoy being with you guys. I think it's tremendous. It really is. Brilliant stuff. Love it, Scotty, says Ian McEwen. Go, go, Scotty. And take care, says Hans Sandy Howden. Sandy's got to go. Uh, Giuseppe Machetti, we want more Scotty. He says, thank you, Giuseppe. Very, very kind of you. And uh, can you do a midweek show, Scotty? And a big kiss from Laura Sosner. Laura, I was thinking what we'll do. Um, if there's any problem with what's being discussed in the new year, then we might actually go um, on to a more regular show here. Get another show on, says Steve Burrows. Watch, Scotty. We're all watching. Yeah, but guys, it depends on you sharing and sharing and sharing. That's how social media works. I make no apology, but I do apologize for all the sharing that goes on with Scotty McClure's videos. I know some of you will be tearing your hair out and going, oh, for goodness sake, Scotty. Right, here's Sean calling. We'll see what Sean's going to say. 
Hello, Sean Dink, you do. You're Hello. listening to Scotty McClure. Hi, I just uh, I wanted to ask your thoughts on him. Um... Right, you'll have to go. Again, I sincerely apologise. I think we'll maybe not take any calls, to be quite honest with you. So that half-witted idiot had to go. Scotty, do you still play God Save the Queen at the end of your show? I haven't done on this one, Craig, but we might go back to playing it. Um, and we, we, because it is the national anthem while Scotland is attached to um, the United Kingdom. I midweek would be great, so don't miss it, says Lisa. Um, Sean is an absolute idiot, says Dean. Yes, Sean is just going to get blocked. Let's block them together, folks, in front of the whole universe. But now I will never take another call. Thank you to a guy called Sean. Oh, well, there you are. Sean, i will just report him for abuse and we'll block him. That's it. And I will never take another Skype call in this program because of a guy called, right, unless we have a change of heart. Okay, what we might do is maybe take calls just from uh, proper, decent people. Um, and there we are. But that was a horrible, horrible low life. Right, uh, we need a delay, says Thomas. Yes, I think so, Thomas. I mean, obviously, on the radio, he would have got on, but he would have been junked. You idiot, Sean, Grrr, says Lisa. Uh, that's Sean in on the naughty list, says Dean. Yes, poor show, Sean, says Richard Dial. And uh, Neil Tibbing's watching. Neil Tibbing, one of the finest wizards Scotty McClure has ever had. A real top man, Neil Tibbing. Lovely, lovely fellow. No! Keep the Skype on, says Dina the dog. Yes, of course, Dina. Why spoil it because of one half-witted idiot? I'll download Skype and do it next week, says Dean Barr. Nos for Sean, says Craig Dunlop. What he do, Richard? Sean has been papped, says Rory. And uh, worth it. Sorry, boys, says Sean. He thinks it was worth it. Sean, it wasn't worth it at all, son. You've just made an absolute fool of yourself. You are classed as a complete and utter idiot. And that's it. So it wasn't worth it. You wasted your time. Um, George Raffin's watching. And uh, block Sean from the whole show. I'll block him from here as well. And he'll be blocked from Facebook. He thinks it's worth it to say a swear word. I don't think it was. Um, right. Uh, George Mulland. Uh, you never read my poem, says George. George, I haven't got your poem. Things go up so quickly. We're out of time, folks. I have to go from me, Scotty McClure, on behalf of of everybody in the world who's watching this wonderful show bless you all join us at the same time next week keep an eye out for the promos i shall now go and block sean o and he'll never ever appear on a scotty mccluse show again and um but he thinks it was worth it good for him and i'll sing you the song goodbye everybody goodbye Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody, of we Tarzan, au revoir, and a cheerio. Have a fantastic week, everybody, from me, Scotty McClue, to you, Dinky-Doo.